Well, hello, everyone. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. Uh, today, we are going to speak, uh, get an update from Pierre Gauthier from Oxico Resources, a rare earth uh, company, uh, rare earths in the sense of mineral sands. Oxico works in Colombia, uh, Brazil, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. We've spoken with Pierre before. Uh, uh, hello, uh, Pierre. You have uh, several new uh, news releases in the last few weeks, uh, but uh, you've got it, one very important release, uh, very just the last day or two from uh, from Colombia. What's what's going on down in Colombia besides all the coffee? Yeah, good, thanks, Byron. Well, you know, if you're in the mining business, having a mining permit to to, to start mining is a pretty important uh, element, and. Um, as we all know, no matter where you are and what mining jurisdiction, there's a long process with that. So Monday this week, we obtained the mining permit from the National Mining Association of uh, of Colombia from the government. And that's a major step in the area that, that we're in because uh, it's an alluvial area along the or Orinoco River, and it's very vast. Uh, it stretches out over 15 kilometers. And we found just a various amounts of uh, minerals there, including gold and uh, and, and plant them in the first meter in this iron cap, and there's a substantial amount of rares below that can be concentrated by, by simple sieving and so on. So we're very excited about this permit. All our investors were waiting for that. We're late, we're five months late, which explained the decrease in the stock price because uh, I think uh, there was a serious doubt whether we even get the permit, so, that, so we have it. And we expect the other permit, the environmental permit to be out within a few weeks, and that allows us to start bringing equipment to the site, doing a reserve study, uh, drilling, whatever we need to do. So, so, so we're very pleased about that. That's the first thing. Well, that's, that's exciting news. Uh, for, you know, a lot of people out there might not really understand Colombia. I sort of kidded around a little bit and talked about, you know, the coffee thing yeah. is what it's famous for. But I mean, if, if you geologically there, you know, there's the Andes Mountains of South yeah. America. I always talk about the dry Andes and the wet Andes, yeah. you know, dry being like Peru yeah. and Chile. Yeah. The yep. wet Andes are up there in Colombia. You've got the Andes Mountains draining down into these rivers with all the, uh, the all the decomposition and the sediment load that these rivers carry, and they're filled with a, a, a with with river sand yep. that has been processed over the years for things like tin and yep. various others. But but you have these sands that also have monazite and 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 uh, why don't you expand on that a little bit about what what is the resource that that you're looking at in, in well, yeah, we're, we're looking at uh, we have 1500 hectares okay mm -hmm. of land under under payment if you will or under purchase payment that'll be finished uh, concluded next a little, little bit here so you've got very little vegetation very little trees there and if you fly over it you can actually see these reddish sands uh, mm -hmm. over very vast areas i'm talking 10 10 12 kilometers uh, mm -hmm. distance and when you see these, the surfaces being reddish in color, there's your iron cap where you have iron and titanium, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And it's almost a marker for the rares that are under it. Now, the, when you don't see that color, it doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just a little deeper. It could be three meters deeper so that uh, you, you don't have to see the iron cap right on surface, but it's below. That's where finding, we're finding that out in the, in the pitting we're doing. We're doing pits every 40 meters to create a reserve here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's easy access, number one, you know, and that's the knock on Colombia. It's nice to have a great project, but you're in the middle of the Amazon and you can't fly in. you got to build an airport. It gets very complicated. In this case, we're right along the river. The property gives on the river. We go there by boat from a little city called Porto Correno, and that has a flight directly to Bogota, one hour flight. So, you know, it's a place where you can actually work. And, uh, you know, we looked at five or six different locations in Colombia before we chose this one. And, uh, we chose it because of that infrastructure. So, you know, to get to work on this, it's not like a conventional drilling program where you're going to drill hard rock down to, you know, 500 meters. I mean, we're doing a reserve now just with a pick and shovel in the first meter and, and doing that every 50 meters on a specific grid, you know. So all the work so far has been by, we have 22 employees that live at the site that do our work like this. So there's a lot can be accomplished like this. Of course, for mining it now, that's another story. You need, we're going to have to, our objective is to mine a thousand tons a day, create a concentrate of 30 tons a day of these virus minerals. That would be that concentrate of rare earths. And then take that concentrate and take it to, to an industrial park uh, that's uh, near Bogota and uh, do our chemistry there and uh, extract the rares there in elemental form. Okay, so that's, that, that's the objective. 
Now, one thing that you know people concern themselves with is you know the the environmental impact. You're not using any uh, any you know toxic chemicals in this process. Much of this is just gravity separation and such, isn't it? Yeah, there's no chemistry on site at all. All right, it's going to be uh, screening and gravity separation to create a gravity concentrate. That's it. You know, so that, that so that makes it a lot easy. From you know our whole work program is well well defined in environmental study, and, and that's what it says there. You know, so you can pick up. A lot of various minerals by gravity that are associated uh, with these rares, including tantalum, niobium, tin, uh, zirconium, gold, and silver, for that matter. So that concentrate gets created locally and shipped to, uh, to Bogota. And it de-risks the whole issue of uh, social license, social ESG, uh, you know, being, yeah. being protested yeah, yeah. at the front gate and things there's like no that. Because you're... That. You know, when, when you start doing chemistry and there's villages and population around there, that's a whole other story. So in our case, we're very very green that way. And, uh, and, you know, so it's, uh, it's perfect, you know, right, right, right. And so uh, now, now, even on the best of days, though, sometimes, you know, monazite tends to have a little bit of uranium or thorium in it. Uh, do, and is, is there a radiation issue? Radioactivity yeah, no, there's issue there's radiation. Deal with? There clearly is a radiation issue in Colombia. You know, when we do that concentrate, there is a radiation issue. So that would not be able to be exported out of the country without taking out that that radiation. So that's why we have a whole scoping study done on building a plant that would treat that 30 ton a day concentrate that would be about a thousand tons a month and uh, take out that, that that radiation and put it aside and have a, a, a clean uh, concentrate to export. So all that work has been done in the lab. We, we've been working on a technology called ultrasound extraction for many, many years. So mm -hmm. we it's a fracking, it's a cracking system. Uh, Acid bake and other technologies can do it. It takes 10 or 12 hours, a lot of pressure, a lot of heat, a lot of acid. In our case, we do it in one hour. And then um, we can simply uh, precipitate out the thorium based on controlling the acidity of the solution. And that's been done already. So then you can neutralize that, either sell it or simply uh, put cement into it and just bury it as totally neutral. You know, So that issue has been solved. And just a general comment, you know, we're, we're involved in Brazil and, and monazites as well, and we're involved in the Congo. So I view these monazite signs as just a tremendous source of rare earths compared to hard rock mining. And that's where you can build up the volume. But I think this radioactivity that you just brought up is, is a constraint to that development. And uh, if we didn't hadn't developed this ultrasound technology, it'd be hard to think of commercializing all these projects. Right. Well, we, we've, we've had another, you know, one of these investor intel discussions before where we talked about the ultrasonic ultrasound yeah. issues. It's just remarkable technology to anybody out there who's not familiar with it. Go to the website, you know, go to the presentation, take a look at it. Uh, uh, it, it merits its own, you know, discussion in and of itself. Yeah, just uh, just to give a quick, quick, quick yeah. overview if somebody's sure. watching this for the first time. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What, what is this? What is this ultrasound thing that which okay. we speak? Here's what the problem is. When you're mining these, these rares, for instance, you, you go and try and create a concentrate, you know, by taking stuff that's in the ground at 1% and make it a 50% type concentrate. In that concentrate, all these rares, 15, 16, they're all to glued together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the objective is to, is, to, is to get these things selectively. So how do you, the word is, crack this? Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of literature on what other people are doing. You use an acid bake system which is 10 or 12 hours of heating the acid up to eight or 900 degrees and putting pressure. And then you liberate these things and they do go into solution. So, you know, it can be done and it is being done and it will be done. In our case, we do it with ultrasound and it takes one hour to do it. And we, you know, what happened that ultrasound emits the, it, it creates these cavitation bubbles in solution that collide mm -hmm. together and it acts as a super grinder of particles so that that grain of sand becomes a thousand other grains and the acid gobbles it up much quicker, you know, so, so you get 95% recovery of everything in solution one hour as opposed to eight. So it's a big competitive edge as far as we're concerned. You know, and we've got patents now issued by the U.S. government and the Canadian government on, on that process. So it's, it's exciting. Well, yeah, the, the, the comparable would be, you know, for people out there, again, who aren't familiar with it, would be uh, lithotripsion. Like if you have a kidney stone and you go to the hospital and they put you in the bath and they zap, they zap their body yeah. and they, they literally break the little stones into much, much, much smaller pieces so that so that's what you're exactly doing what it is exactly what it is you know so we do that uh with the sand particles and mining as opposed to the kidney stone in your system that's exactly what it does you know but like i said we we work with uh, mcgill university and university of montreal here and uh, that has a it's called a sonification chemistry department it's the only one in north america so it's about 30 phds 
in chemistry working on ultrasound at the University of Montreal. So this is like our, our research lab where we get all kinds of things done. And that's how we've been able to progress the technology forward quite a bit. And, and with that, we'll call it quits and wish everybody uh, good investing. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, hey, man, look at the world, pray for peace and, uh, you know, keep your, eye, keep your eye out for good investments. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Great. Thanks.